Hello. Thank you very much for coming to the, uh, the second in the, the legal seminar series that Mariko O'Connell is presenting in conjunction with the uh, Holden Council on Aging. I want to thank Claire Nelson uh, and the folks here at the Council on Aging for um, arranging this for us. I want to thank, I just got louder again. Is this, <laughs> did something just happen? Is this okay? Can everybody, can you hear me in the back now? That's great. I want to thank uh, Chris Hines from fin Hines Financial uh, Services, who has provided all of these lunches for you today. I think most people came back because of the food. I figured that was why the, the crowd was so good. So thank you very much. Chris, is, is Chris here? Yeah, he's right here. Chris? Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. And then to add insult to injury, so I was coming from my office at Myrick O'Connell and tried taking a shortcut, and I was desperate, and I called my secretary, I get here late, and of course I get to the parking lot, there's no parking spaces left. So Claire, I'm actually like at the end of one of those rows in an illegal spot. That's right, so if, I don't know, if you've got influence out there, you know, if you could, if you could take care of that, I would appreciate it. Uh, as, we, as we explained, as Janet Moore and I uh, explained last month, uh, one of the goals of this series, or at least of this, this set, this, uh, this um, uh, four uh, presentation set, is basically to allow you to make sure that in your estate planning and in your asset planning, you are eliminating four beneficiaries that you really don't want to make part of your estate plan. One of them was the Internal Revenue Service, and one of them is the State Department of Revenue, and we dealt with both of them uh, last month. One of them is the nursing home. Um, and we're going to talk about the, uh, that, that particular issue this month and next month. And then finally is the lawyers. You don't want to be paying us. I mean, because, you know, you know, well, you can, but you don't necessarily want to be paying us a lot of money. And so the goal of estate, a lot of estate planning is to avoid the probate process. So we're going to try to deal with that uh, in the fourth presentation. But today we're going to focus on... Um, we're going to do two pieces dealing with nursing homes. Um, this week is, is, or this month is going to be focusing on what you can do kind of in the longer run to plan. And you may have heard some of these alternatives before, or you may not. And then uh, next month, we're going to talk about mess, making the best of a bad situation, which is for folks that didn't do all of this stuff and just kind of find themselves in the kind of crisis situation that we often find ourselves talking to people about. So we're going to talk about, as we did, um, last month, we're going to talk about Frank and Mary. These are my, the couple that I've used so often as an example. So Frank, or so Mary has a house. Uh, in this particular case, um, Frank has died. Mary has a house and it's worth about $300,000. And she has an IRA that's worth about $150,000. She has an annuity worth about $100,000. And she has a bank account worth about seventy-five. dollars So she has total um, assets of about $625,000. Uh, she owns her home, which isn't really big, uh, and she's got social security income of about $1,000 a month, and she's probably going to be just fine uh, for the rest of her life as long as she doesn't get stuck needing nursing home care. If she does need nursing home care, then at the least, um, that nursing home care is going to cost her about $125,000 a year. Actually, that number can, kind of keeps on creeping up. Nursing home care now is between about uh, three or four, three and four hundred dollars a day, or between about nine and twelve thousand dollars a month. So, 
kind of the math, that's where it kind of turns into, is somewhere between about $125,000 and $150,000 a year in nursing home care. Uh, and so the cost at $125,000 would be $625,000. And the reason why that number is important, you're going to see later on, because there is, in order, if you are trying to do any planning by basically giving away your assets or trying to protect some of your assets, there is a five-year look-back period. So if you're Mary and you haven't done any planning uh, and you go to the nursing home, you can pretty much count on the fact that all of those assets are going to evaporate unless you do certain things, which we'll talk about next month. Um, uh, in addition to that, uh, if Mary were, were spending down those assets, she'd probably be needing to pay a penalty regarding the payout on the annuity. Many of you here probably have annuities, and many of, many of those annuities probably are in the form where you can reach those assets, but in order to reach them, you have to pay a penalty. And by the way, if you do have an annuity, I, I know that there are a number of people who come to see me uh, who uh, just tell me that they have annuities and that therefore that asset is protected in the event that they need nursing home care. And I say, well, but can you get to the money? Oh yeah, well, I, say, I, can get to the, I have to pay a penalty, but I, have to get to the, I can get to the money. Well, as long as you can get to the money for mass health purposes, that asset is still yours, even though you have to pay a penalty in order to get to the money. So in this case, the annuity payment would have had required about a 10% spend down. Uh, and in addition to that, if Mary went into a nursing home and wanted to qualify for mass health, oh, I should step back. Um, if you, are, if you are in a nursing home uh, because you are there to recover, um, because you've been to the hospital and you need rehab, and off, most nursing homes have rehab units, um, but they are called nursing homes because they're technically skilled nursing facilities. They are places where skilled nurses are all, always available because it is presumed you are in the physical condition where you need to have a nurse always available. So if you go from a hospital to a skilled nursing facility and you're there to get better, then the cost of your getting better uh, is probably going to get paid by Medicare if you are over 65. Could you raise your hands if you're over 65? <laughs> so that's pretty much everybody here. If you're, if you're going to the nursing home to get better, then that getting better is going to get covered by Medicare because Medicare uh, is, is basically just health insurance for the old. And just like health insurance pays for the cost of getting better, which means typically the cost of being in the hospital, and then if you need rehab, the cost of some rehab when you're outside of the hospital. Uh, Medicare will pay the same thing, just as regular health insurance would, if you're getting better. If you're not getting better, or if it's taking you a long time to get better, uh, then Medicare will not pay for that care. So if you, if you are in a hospital and you stay at least three nights in a hospital and you've been admitted, by the way, that's very important because more and more hospitals now uh, are, are, I see a couple of people shake, you know, oh yeah, the, are, 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 you, you, can, you kind of feel like you're admitted uh, until the hospital lets you know that actually you stayed three days but you really were never admitted. And so that's kind of a separate issue because Medicare is trying to push people toward not getting admitted. But if you've been admitted for three nights and then you get to a, uh, a, a nursing home, then Medicare will pay for up to 100 days in that nursing home. They'll pay 100% of the first 20 days and 80% of the remainder. If you have a Medigap insurance plan, the Medigap will pay the remaining piece of that remainder for up to, 120, or, uh, up to 100 days or until your doctor says you're not getting better anymore. Um, so it can end during that 100-day period. So if you are, if you are the, the, the time, and then if you are off of Medicare, and if you don't have any other health insurance, which I assume that you wouldn't, then if you're in the nursing home, you're on private pay. And the private pay numbers are the numbers that we have up there. So what, what we're talking about today uh, is, is the way in which you can qualify for Mass Health. Mass Health is the Massachusetts name for Medicaid, totally different from Medicare. Uh, Medicare is simply health insurance for the old. Medicaid is health and other insurance for the needy, for the poor. And so the question in order to qualify for Medicaid or for mass health, which is what is, that is called in Massachusetts, is are you poor? So if you were poor, in, in order to qualify for, for Medicaid, uh, you need to have, if you are married in this case, countable assets of less than $3,000. You can have a home 
at the time you qualify for, for, uh, for MassHealth. Um, but the rule will be you'll be required to sign something or your power of attorney or whoever would, saying that you're going to then sell your house within nine months. And within that nine month period, if you get an offer of at least two thirds of fair market value, you have to accept it. And then once you've gotten those proceeds, the proceeds are not exempt. Uh, Medicaid has to be paid back for the period of time. And I'm going to, I'm sorry, I'll just use MassHealth. MassHealth and Medicaid are the same thing here. MassHealth has to be paid back at that point for what they've paid on your behalf. And then you have to spend the rest of the house proceeds down until you're below that $2,000 figure. The $2,000 figure. So if you're, if you're Mary and you want to do anything but be on private pay for those five years, then you have to, to meet those, those mass health criteria. You have to be, be under $2,000, which means in this case, you have to spend a lot of money on nursing home care. Now, if you were Frank and Mary, and, I, and I'm, I'm going to spend a little time on this one because many people don't realize this. If, if, if Frank was still alive and Mary then went into the nursing home and they had the exact same assets, the same assets, um, Mary could qualify for mass health immediately. And the reason for that is that the rule, when two people are in, a, when, when one spouse is in the nursing home and the other spouse is at home, is that while the spouse in the nursing home can't have more than $2,000 in countable assets, the spouse at home can first of all have a home. Uh, and the home is not a countable asset and no lien gets placed on the home. The home is a, is a safe asset. In addition to that, the spouse at home can have as much as $109,560 um, in, uh, in cash, in money that's around. Now, I can't remember. Do we have another slide that deals with that? We, let's, let's go to that one then. So, well, that's not very good. Well, I'll tell you what's in that little secret box there. I, I, I can see <laughs> we used the wrong color as the background for that one. I guess we're going to have to change that. So if Mary goes into the nursing home, as I mentioned to you, the house is safe. Frank can keep as much as $109,560 in assets. So, and remember, he had, and I'll just kind of go, he had uh, an IRA that was worth $150,000, an annuity worth $100,000, and bank assets were 75,000. You have those all in your, all, all of those numbers in your handout. So what Frank could do in this case, as an example of, this is an example of what he could do. Remember, he can keep $109,560. So what he could do is he could keep $75,000 in cash. Um, and then he could take the rest, all of the rest of the money, and he could buy an annuity. Now, this is different from the annuity that I was referring to and that these folks had right now, in that the annuity that Frank buys has to have certain characteristics to it. Uh, it has to have monthly payouts that are equal in amount, and it has to be paid out over his actuarial life expectancy, no longer. But as long as the annuity has those characteristics, then the purchase of that annuity by Frank is a legitimate purchase which turns an asset, a very big asset, which was, which was going to put him over the magic mass health numbers, into income. And the, the kind of the big, you hate to call it a loophole, you know, but the, the big loophole in the mass health system is that, in this case, is that while Frank can only have this given amount of cash assets, Frank can have infinite income. 